Hey everyone, welcome to lesson four of the WIMIS 2015 for Employers five part video series. In this lesson, I'll be introducing you to safety data sheets. By the end of this lesson, you'll have a better understanding of the differences between MSDSs and SDSs, the benefits of switching to a 16 section format, some of the most important sections that are most relevant to your workers and some more roles and responsibilities. One result of the integration of GHS into WIMIS is that the original material safety data sheets have been updated and renamed safety data sheets. Specific SDS requirements are contained in part four of the hazardous products regulation. While the SDS format and related content is provided in schedule one, replacing material safety data sheets with safety data sheets helps to improve the classification of hazards. It improves employer involvement in workplace safety, ensures safe handling of hazardous products, and it enhances emergency response. Still, there are several similarities between the two types of sheets. For instance, they're both typically written by product manufacturers and suppliers, but they may be prepared by employers whenever products are created and used exclusively in the workplace. Similarly, both documents contain hazard information and are more detailed than product labels. More importantly, both documents are resources and guides for workers in workplaces and help with identification of hazards and promoting precautionary measures when dealing with various products. While there are a number of similarities between the two documents, the 16 section SDSs contain different information and present the safety data in a different format to that of the 9 section MSDS. SDSs have a more comprehensive hazard classification criteria. They include new classes of hazards, make physical hazard criteria more consistent with the transportation of dangerous goods regulation. They employ a more standardized language and they utilize a new standardized format. Really, the biggest thing is that it's much easier for your workers to find the information that's relevant to them using this format. And while the MSDSs were updated after every three years, the SDSs must be updated within 90 days after any significant information that changes the class of the hazardous product or impacts on protective measures against the product becomes available. In fact, Women's 2015 requires that manufacturers communicate such information to every purchaser of the product in writing. Women's 2015 safety data sheets are created according to UN-backed, internationally agreed upon GHS system. This enables Canadian manufacturers, suppliers, and employers to use a universal format and content. These revised documents have a lot of benefits. They reduce common barriers to international trade in different chemicals, which the GHS has classified as hazardous. SDSs improve regulatory efficiency. They promote compliance and provide more consistent information to stakeholders. They make it much easier for workers to handle hazardous materials because information is much easier to find. Because they result in much better communication, the transition to SDSs is expected to reduce the cost of lost time, insurance, avoidable losses, fines, and penalties to Canadian businesses, and will help businesses to improve their bottom line through decreased injuries, improved health, safety, performance, and higher productivity. As with most other areas within WIMIS, your responsibilities as an employer revolve around providing education, training, and instruction primarily. It's important that you educate your workers on both the current MSDS format and the new SDS format since, as we talked about earlier, over the transition period, we'll be seeing a combination of both types of documents in both WIMIS 1988 and WIMIS 2015 elements uh, throughout the workplace. You also need to manage safety data sheets and ensure that workplace generated safety data sheets 
comply fully with either MSDS or SDS format. You need to maintain an accurate inventory of all hazardous products, ensuring that each has an up-to-date SDS or MSDS when entering the workplace. So anytime you have a chemical entering the workplace, obviously you need to ensure immediately that you receive an SDS and that it's added to your real-time inventory. Of course, you need to make sure that SDSs are available to workers and you have to ensure that workers follow the guidelines contained within an SDS. So all the information contained on an SDS doesn't apply to everyone and their segmented nature has made it much easier for workers to find information that's relevant to them without having to dig through piles of the product's technical aspects that's really not useful to them. So exactly what sections are most relevant to your workers and what's contained in them? Section four shows first aid measures by route of exposure as well as most important symptoms and effects. This is the section that your workers may go to after they've had some kind of exposure to a product. Section five communicates the firefighting measures including proper extinguishing media, specific hazards and specific equipment and precautions for firefighters. If you really want to be proactive, you can provide SDSs for the products that you use to your local fire department. The information contained within this section will be extremely valuable for them to know if a fire were to ever break out within your facility to the extent where the fire department would need to get involved. This section tells what to do in the event that the product was accidentally released and includes information like required protective equipment for cleanup, emergency procedures, methods, and containment for cleanup. Section 7 is very important and definitely relevant to workers as it contains precaution for safe handling and guidelines for the safe storage of the product. This section should be thoroughly reviewed by workers before using a product. Similar to Section 7, this section is extremely important and should always be reviewed by a worker before using a product. And of course by you as an employer to determine what types of controls must be put in place prior to allowing workers to use it. It contains exposure limits, required engineering controls, and the personal protective equipment that users of the product must use in order to stay safe. If your employees haven't been trained on the new safety data sheets, as we mentioned before, there are a couple ways you can get this done. The free Women's 2015 training PowerPoint that you received contains a section on safety data sheets and is fully customizable. Simple to add additional information to the PowerPoint if you wanted to add information specific to your workplace. Of course, Eversafe Media also offers a super simple to deploy Wemis 2015 course that contains all Wemis aspects, including information on both Wemis 1988 material safety data sheets and Wemis 2015 safety data sheets. Not only does this method practically automate your training, but it also automates record keeping too. So what this means is no more printing and marking quizzes, no more filing, no more wondering who's missed their women's training, and no more searching through files to find evidence of training if you're ever visited by your local legislative body and asked to provide proof of training. Every women's course concludes with a 35 question final exam that tests workers on the required women's knowledge that they'd learned throughout the course. Workers get immediate feedback after submitting their answers that explain clearly the rationale behind the question and the answer. When they finish their exam, they're awarded with a beautiful wall certificate and a handy wallet card that they can carry with them to show that they're certified. The back side of the wallet cards display what information the workers learned during the course, and we've even included a section where you can add the date and trainer signature for any workplace specific training that you provided. If your local health and safety inspector ever shows up and requests to see the proof of training for one or multiple workers, you can pull it up in just a few clicks. It's also super simple to view exam results and track training status. So we're just about out of time for this lesson, so let's wrap things up. In a nutshell, Women's 2015 safety data sheets are clearly an improvement and one more step towards reducing workplace injuries and fatalities and improving the safety of users of hazardous or controlled products. In the next and final lesson, we'll be covering Women's 2015 education and training. Until next time, have fun, live safe, See you soon.